assurance. i
that you are always with us. Holding us close and guiding us through this journey. We thank you, Lord, for the beautiful memories of his life. We thank you, Lord, because he knows you before death came. Lord, we commit this program into your mighty hand. Father, we pray that you have your way. We take preeminence in the name of Jesus. Let everything we are going to do today bring glory, honor, and adoration to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and everybody says, Amen. Hallelujah. We welcome everyone to this service of songs. We welcome the Agara family and friends and family who have flown outside of, the, outside of the country and outside of the state, and also those who are within the state. Say thank you so much for coming. Why don't you just um, welcome the, your neighbor and say thank you for coming in today to celebrate our brother, Deji Agar. Thank you all for coming in today. Um, now we'll move into the next item on the agenda today, which is the second hymn. I'll invite the choir to take that.
Good evening, everyone. Our Bible reading today shall be in the book of uh, Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve, like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was risen to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who are dead. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believer who have died will rise from the graves then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. This is the word of God and the end of his word. Um, I thank you all for taking your time to listen to the word of God today. Thank you very much. Shall we be on track? Let's rest, rise up as we take the third theme. We speak of the rent of the blessed. Thank you. 
this morning, uh, Brother Prodigy. And first and least is uh, Brother Dakbo and Lawrence. Dakbo and Lawrence, Miss Comfort, come share a testimony of our Prodigy, Dakbo and Lawrence. so many ways that I know a lot of other people that have come across and I don't really know I'm mean, I'm lost for words but then today I feel deeply sad very sorry I feel angry because I really can't comprehend what has just happened to me my entire life, I've not felt the kind of pain or loss or I've never felt this depressed or heartbroken. I've never felt it. But notwithstanding, uh, AG was a very nice person. I mean, you can see how much he's been celebrated. DJ is selfless. DJ is one person that will literally go above and beyond for you. DJ would never, never like to see you being in this corner and then you're going under. DJ would literally break his back for you. Um, I met DJ like a long time ago, say around 13 years now or thereabouts. And there have been drastic change based on the impact that I've experienced knowing him and I appreciate God for him. I'm happy that he crossed my life. He has taken away a part of my life that I don't see how that could be replaced but then I don't worry for that because he constantly reminds me to do better and then definitely improve and try to make the same kind of impact as much as I can. That you brought so many people together. I have met different kinds of people through KG. He has built a network around me, his friends. I mean, particularly, I don't think there's anybody you could call up and to speak about DG that I can't count successes. Several, several of them. Um, there's too much to say, but I don't want to take too much time because someone else with them talk should also say his piece. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I mean, I all of my experiences as as a man, um, I've had to go through that with DJ. We started our first day um, in college together. Um, I mean, every day from that day up until um, his last day, we've been inseparable. He's, he's a brother. Is, is a brother to me. Uh, we've had very amazing experiences. Um, I can tell a lot of the successes that he has, he has achieved. Um, I know a lot of lives that he has impacted positively. He's a winner. Uh, he's, he's, 
is a champion in his rights. And I, I thank God for, for the life that he lived. I, he can never be replaced. Ago, I like, after several trials with you know, DG has been a tremendous you know part of me being here today. Because after several years of me trying to get here, just as I got here, and I hadn't seen him here before before he passed. But I'm. Um, I'm grateful to God for the life that he lived. I, I'm sad, but I just, As I often called you, it breaks my heart to think that this world will go without the sight of your beautiful smile, the sound of your joyous laughter, the motion of your body when you dance. There are days when I remember your words and it brings me tears to think you won't get to say so much more. Life now feels like a fickle place. It's ironic how one's life changes in an instant. I was going through the website that was created in memory of you, and as I read people's words about you, a lot of things started to make sense to me. Like how you always managed your money as a bank manager would, and how your way of seeing things was like a true Yoruba man. And I, I'm, I'm amazed at how you were able to be present for all these people. I'm truly amazed at how much impact you were able to make in people's lives. How to one person, you're a counselor, to another, you're a manager, to another, you're a best friend, to another, you're a brother, to my parents, a son, to another, a fiance. another best person in the entire world to me a guardian and a protector I miss you so bad he has to think of milestones without you present to witness it it seems to me like you were able to touch so many lives so much more than some people who die at a very old age I'm glad you were who you were, unapologetic, joyous, happy, fun. I can't think I'll go off script. It amazes me how 
you always make time for everybody, even when it seems like you had a hundred things to do. I'm glad you knew Christ, and I'm glad you called him your savior. It gives me joy to know that you are resting at his bosom. You are resting at the feet of Jesus, and it pains me to have to grow up this fast because <laughs> They used to undo everything for me, everything. It would be the one to worry on my behalf. I don't know what to do, but I know God has us. Um, I love you. I really wish I got to tell you more, but. Thank you. Kenny, and now call on Benga to come share his testimony. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for gathering for my brother, my friend, and my confidence, DJ. Uh, when I was told to come speak, I said, let me try to write something about DJ. And I couldn't write nothing. I couldn't think of nothing. And I just, the first thing that came to mind was the first day I met him. Uh, met at an interrogate office. Just saw a cool, quiet guy. Sat across, I just drove, I just came back. Something led to another. Um, he laughed at me a lot because I love to crash my cars because I was just very bad at it, at driving, but, you know, it would encourage me and say, don't worry. Now, Nigeria, we all come from, we go learn. And the first time we actually sat down to speak, something struck me about DJ. Instead, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, he sees something positive in you and he leaves something positive in you. And I was thinking about it today, and... I said to myself, Binga, can you speak without crying today? And I said, no, I'm, not. I'm going to do my best not to cry because we're celebrating someone who lived short but had an impact. A lot of people who I knew even lived longer than him didn't get to have. And um, Akindeji Omar a great person, a great teacher, as much as a great teacher he is, he's one of the best listeners I've known. If you've ever had a chance to argue with DJ, he will tell you one thing and one thing only. He'll say, let's stick to the point. Let's, don't let us move away, don't let us move away. Let's stay like this. And he will do his hand like this. Um, a quick, uh, just a short introduction of myself. I also coach the team he was playing for, and I was at the field when the situation happened. And we both had a goal set for that team, a dream for the team to rise up. I'll tell you how I met DJ and brought him to soccer. I met him at the office one day for like, I have not spoken to him for like a week or two, and I just, we were watching so um, soccer together, and he was just talking and I said, eh, yo, do you play soccer? And I was like, ah. He has this weird smile when you ask him a crazy question. And I was like, in his, you know, all those questions like, Nami, you they ask. And he looked at me and smiled. And he said, well, I play a little, but there's a team I'm going to play for on Sunday. He mentioned the name of the team. Fortunately for me, unfortunately for them, they are my opposition for Sunday. I said, this same NSL, he said, yes. I said, okay, you're playing on Sunday? He said, yes. We got off work. I drove to his uncle's house, I picked him up, took him to the field. So the people who were supposed to play for were training on the other side. We were training on the other side. I moved away, away from them. And I, I, I just stood, put him, pushed him to the side. I, was, I just, you know, sent something special about him. And the first game he played for us, he scored a free kick. And was like, guy, 
Yeah. If I tell you he plays with me, I don't play. Like if I if I tell you where I play, blah blah blah. I was like, ah, guy, thank God I took a bet on you. Now why I told you that story is we made connection of soccer, but DJ's connection with me was beyond soccer. Like I said, he is a brother to me. The job I do today, he found a job for me and motivated me and taught me all I needed to know to get me that field. And <laughs> Sister Diola said um, on, was it on Friday when I presented, uh, on Monday when I dropped the trophy, he said, you're right. <laughs> and I smiled for a bit and on my way home I was like tearing up, I was like, actually that is true. There's no morning without me texting him, good morning, I'm here. That's our morning conversation, because DJ is my right. But I'll end this thing with a quick um, Bible verse from Ecclesiastes 3, 4 to 5. If you guys would love to read with me, let's quickly open up together. All right, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather, to gather stones together to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Then the last thing I would read for you guys would also be in the same book of Ecclesiastes. Let's go to 9 verse 11. And it says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor yet bread to the wise, nor, rich, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance up next to them all. In my little story I've told you, I was chanced to meet DJ, and I'm very glad I met him, because in the short time I've known, I did know him, he taught me a lot, and I believe I will continue to pass that on to my generation, some born, and to always talk about him with my team. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak about TJ. Thank you, Benga. Abraham and Jodo to come and share the testimony. to celebrate his life because I spent the last couple of weeks, you know, um, trying to process it and I told everyone around me, just look at it as, as a relocation. Uh, no, honestly, with us, it's very unbelievable. Um, I have even got that here. It's more of a reality check. Um, I just want to thank God for the life he lived. I know, um, like Dako said, the mind is irreplaceable. He had everyone's interest at, at his heart. I can't count the number of CVs I have in our chat messages, you know, trying to help people to get this, to get that, always seeking for help for people, trying to be there for everyone. Acts of service was top notch. It was everything, man. I just want to thank God for the life he lived, for, for the lives he touched, for the impact, for his legacy, while on earth. 
I even couldn't wait for you, bro. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Abraham. Um, I'm not good at talking about stuff like this, but I have a trivia that I wrote on page 32. You can take time to read it. Um, but I'm going to say stuff off script. Um, if this was a different um, ceremony, did you probably be standing right here? I call it tonight. So, I don't know what to say. Digi was my brother from another mother. Digi was my partner in everything I did. Every relationship I've been in, I would say Digi was my side chick. <laughs> um, we did everything together. We were always on FaceTime, and, or everyone else I've been in a relationship with, they're always jealous of like, oh, Digi, every time you're on the call with him, what's going on? We really had great plans together. Um, like I said, he's the closest person to me. Um, I'm not going to say he's gone, because he's always here. He's always going to be there. Um, there's a big shoe that I left behind. Um, I don't think anyone can fit it. I tried, but I'll keep trying. Um, Digi was emotionally smart. It was emotionally available for people. And that's something that I was starting to learn from him. Um, Cause I only have space for two people in my life. <laughs> and that's my sister and whoever I'm in a relationship with. Maybe Jesus now. You know? <laughs> uh, well, Deji was, no, Deji is a great guy. Um, he invited me to this church, um, and he also invited me to join the service unit, but, you know, I'm not always around, so I told him, when I get back, I'm going to join. I'm going to be active, because for some strange reason, um, he found his way to God, and he was so close to God, and, I was wondering what changed or why well, everything is beginning to make sense now because I guess God was a very good place for him. And um, I don't want anyone to mourn because I think this is a celebration of life. Um, they're just not gone, they're just always going to be here uh, watching over everyone. It was an angel on earth, an angel in heaven also. Um, I don't know. I'm just lost of all, but I'm grateful to God for his life and the life well spent. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. Thank you, Brian and Jordan. Now I'll call on Adiola to come share this thing. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start by reading 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice or rejoice whenever the truth wins. Love never gives up, never loses faith, 
was always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. I thought during the next speech I was going to be writing with my vows. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. How do you speak about someone who was all action? My Mr. Tokanto. Did he loved me as though he knew that his days were numbered? He loved me urgently, completely, and intentionally. Like Christ loved the church. Like Christians are instructed to love in 1 Corinthians 13, 47. He had vision when they didn't. He led with grace and he prayed for me when I was weak. But isn't that true of the way that he loved all of us? I'm not sure how one person found the time to be there for everyone so specifically, but my dear, he did it. He didn't complain. He didn't go around publicizing all that he had did. He just did day after day. Titemi, Okomi, my priest and forever lover. Thank you for showing me what it means to choose someone and love them wholeheartedly. Thank you for your life of service to God and mankind. For being someone that we could all count on. No man is perfect. But my love, you came close. Thank you so much. To live in the hearts of those we leave behind is not to die. So I guess you're living forever. We planned our lives till old age. My DJ was a planner. And these plans always involved us being there for other people and helping in whatever way we could. It feels like everything has been snatched away from us. Like the rug underneath my feet was snatched, leaving me on the floor. But I celebrate your life today, my husband. I would always love you, and I will never forget how you loved me. Thank you for leaving me with your beautiful family. Thank you. Thank you, Athiola. Now I'll call on Oinga and Taiwo to come share of Taiwo to come share this and this testimony. Church, 
Okay. I said, Asna has won. He said, he was watching the match now. I said, ah, I've been going to church lately now, but my car had an accident. DG being DG, which kind of excuse be that one? You could have made it to church if you wanted to. Two hours later, I had a phone call from his coach telling me DG has a cardiac arrest. Honestly, I promise you, if the coach was in my front telling me that, I don't think he would be here today. <laughs> um, but I thank God for the distance. Um, I got to the hospital that day, and I saw him laying on the bed. Everybody said he's dead, but I still saw someone that was breathing, so I, don't, I didn't understand. I promise you I was lost for a couple of hours. Actually, I was dead, but I guess I woke up back, or should I say he helped me wake up back. Since when I was a child, me knowing my left from my right was true dead. I wanted to walk like him, I wanted to talk like him, I wanted to play like him, do every single thing just exactly the way he does it. Because he's just so, so perfect. It got to a point that I even, like, gave a little bit distance from myself because I felt like I was staining his wife. That's how perfect I saw him. He taught me a lot of things in life, but one thing he always told me is, Everybody that has a great future, we definitely have it rough in the beginning. He said, no matter how many help you get, no matter how many, you know, how many things you try to do, if you have a genuine great future, it will definitely be hard for you in the beginning. Because I used to cry to only him. And we fight a lot. Honestly, he's the only one that can talk to me that I can honestly listen. So now I guess no one can talk to me. Because <laughs> he will just call me sometimes. Sometimes I see some phone call and I'm like, oh my God. Guy, waiting, waiting there before he starts, I'm like, I'm sorry. I promise you I hate saying I'm sorry. He taught me a lot of things. Honestly, anytime anyone used the word was, I just laugh. Because you people might think I'm crazy, which is fine. But we still spoke on Saturday. Watching last night's match, I was complaining about a wrong pass. I just said in my head all day, how can he pass it like that? Every single chance the G has, he uses to teach me a new thing, either an idea or something I can just hold on to for when the time is right to act on it. He taught me to always be myself in every single situation, every single room, room I enter, every single thing I do. I don't have to do it perfect, I don't have to do it right, but he always told me one thing, anything you do, Make sure you can do it with your head up. If you can't do it with your head up, then don't do it at all. And anytime you step out from the house, remember that you are representing a family. Remember you are representing a name. Honestly, I know I'm a stubborn boy, because some people will say I took that from my dad, but I will say I took it from my dad or my mom. <laughs> I love the G more than my own self, because I promise you, he's someone that if he tells me to jump inside the fire, the only question I will ask him is, if I come out and I say you, 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 you do what you say you do.
because I trust him so much. There's nothing he says that I wouldn't do because I know he always has my best interest. When life was <laughs> when life was life here with me, uh, I was home with my parents. I had to sleep in the mountain for like seven days. It got to a point I asked my mom, I said, I did not kill anybody. <laughs> Why am I doing white fasting for seven days? Ah, even the prophets in the Bible, how many days are they doing? <laughs> I get frustrated a lot. He will just tell me, ah, it's time. We time, everything will get better. Just do it. And most times my emotions get the best of me. And uh, I react before I, you know, do some things and I apologize one after. But he always took me with love. And there was an incident that happened when I was six years old in school that they had to they had to go rushing to call him for. Honestly that day I felt like he would leave me and just, you know, walk away. But he said one statement and I would end with that. He said, I'm your brother. Anything that happens, anything that you do, just know that you are doing it, but you are also doing it to affect you. But the last thing I will do is leave you. I know you did not leave me. I know you just went to a better place. And I pray that honestly with God, So rest in peace. I'll call the India to come shut us down. to get to the, the hospital and when the doctor came in I told them I was like well the head nurse came and I was like when the doctor comes because for some reason I already knew what we're going to say and I was like when the doctor comes can you ask them to pull me to the side I don't want them to say it in front of Adiola because um, then I'll have to deal with two people being, I don't know. And as soon as the doctor walked in, I looked in his eyes. His eyes were very red. And he was like, do you want to sit down? I said, no. And you know, it just went on and on about the way they break this news to you. And I remember feeling like a thousand jolts of electricity just passed through me. And I said no probably like a million times and said no and kept saying no, like it's not possible. Until now, my brain is still saying no because I can't comprehend how life is supposed to go on. Without you, Um, did you always say, it's Uyinda, I don't have to worry about her? But that's because I was able to focus on me because you focused on everybody else. And so, <laughs> did you have left me in the data? I saw 
saw him on Sunday, the day he died, he was sitting right there. Um, uh, and I was so busy that I didn't get to give him a hug. Uh, I kept saying to everyone, I wish um, today and like I'll just sleep and wake up on Saturday because I'm like, I don't want to go through these two days. But um, somehow you have given me the strength. You have taking care of everything and everyone in a way that we're able to stand here today and speak. How is it that somebody can be so quiet, yet so impactful, that you did not have to say a word? His presence alone carried power. He was, he is that person that you, you pray for your child to be like, and you say amen without even hesitating because um, no one is perfect, but my brother came very close. And I still keep saying it, God, why did you take the best of us? There's four of us and you just, you took the best of the four. And I keep asking, if you are, if, if you are taking me at least it's only the family that will be crying. Why did you drag that your life to it? So. But as they say, God knows best. I hope you would rest in peace. But I also hope that you will never leave us. Because there was four of us. And I don't want to ever believe that it's, it's, it's only three of us left, because I, I know that I, I have an older brother that is now an angel. And I promise you, my children will know all about you from the times when you were so stubborn. Because <laughs> everybody knew the emotionally stable DG. I can tell you about the different version. But I love you so. I love you so much. And to everyone, if you can, do it. If there's anything you want to do, if there's anything that your heart desires. My brother postponed so many things. He postponed so many things. He was always waiting for the right time and the perfect time and the this and the that. And just when the right time was starting, he went to be with the Lord. So um, if there's anything you want to do, just do it. Do it. I love you, Akideji, but God loves you more. He couldn't wait to bring you home. And I hope that when we meet again, because I know we will, or if there's another life, and we come back again. I hope you will be my brother. We will choose to be my brother again. Um, the only thing that I ask is that this time, let's do it for a longer period of time. Because I, I enjoyed being your sister. And I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Inde. And last but not least, I'm going to call on Papa to come share his testimony. Initially, I said I wasn't going to see anything. Imagine me standing here to speak on behalf of so, you know, someone that I was there when they were naming him. Uh, that uh, one of the people.
people that I'm looking on to that will keep me a befitting barrier when I'm gone. Now, I'm at his funeral. It's a serious things to deal with. I know it's, my God is the only comforter. Biggie has a lot of plans. And uh, before he wanted to do anything, he would share with me. The Saturday before the, the bad incident happened, he still came to the house. I said, Papa, the next thing I want to do now, I want to buy a house. I said, okay, good. But this is not the time to buy a house. So what are we going to do? Continue to save. He said, okay, that was what I'm thinking about as well. I said, okay, what about the next, second thing? I said, okay, I know you want to hear that. Yeah, I want to hear it. Next year, I'm planning that we'll go to Nigeria to get married. I said, okay, good. The plan was for the G to move out of my house and to his own house. But he moved out, as you all know, my house is a body house. He moved out so that his younger ones and then other people might have other area to play with. That's why he moved out. Because our plan was Digi. You are one of my favorite boys. I want to celebrate you leaving this place in your house. But he continued savings. But he couldn't leave to spend the money. Digi requested something last year, November. He started in September, I said, Papa, I don't know how you're going to talk to my dad. You know, he's kind of stubborn. But whatever he wants to do, this is what I want. What do you want to do? I've never celebrated anything, but I want to celebrate my graduation. I said, okay. But can we move it to next year? He said, no. He said, I want to do it in December. December? Okay. And his parents already had a plan to go and spend that time in London. So they have to change the ticket. I said, this is what he said he wants. You got to come. He said, he graduated master's in cybersecurity in December. And to get married, planning to get married next year. Uh, I said, man, that I truly believe in God, I will have said a lot of bad things. Because why will somebody that have touches a lot of life, that have planned so much of what he wants to do for his future? Even my son, when he came, when they came that Saturday, he said, Papa, you know, I'm taking somewhere with me. I know. I said, it's your boy. He said, we have his own room. I said, it's your boy. I know. With you, I know somewhere is fine. But as his sibling said to us all, the parents and I, are we the second parents, that they want to celebrate him. I said, did you want to celebrate him? We can't just bury him like that. Who was celebrating, and I know a lot of life that he has touched. I called someone that he was trying to put his resume together because I was the one that introduced that gentleman to him. I said, DJ, I want you to do whatever you could do to make this guy get a good job because he just finishes undergraduate. So, okay, Papa, I'll get it done. Consider it done. So, I need went through the first interview with this gentleman, he even taught him more. He already knew all the questions that they're going to ask him. So that's how the G is. And there are a lot of people who still tutoring in Nigeria to get into computer. Please, 
let's do whatever we can to help the society so that people can talk good about us when we leave. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Just do your best today. They did plans, a, a lot of things, but he couldn't wait. The angel took him away from us. But we know he's in a better place. Pastor, I know Oyinda will still give forth of thanks uh, towards the end of the program. We thank you for hosting us today and everyone that came, uh, came to celebrate it with us. Uh, the program continues tomorrow. And on behalf of his parents, my dear senior sister, and his, because his dad is no more an in-law, is part of the family. We thank you all. I will continue to miss Deji for as long as I live. But God loves him most. Thank you. Well, thank you to all who have come to share that us. But now we will call the choir to come render the fifth in or the fourth in right.
Bible reading, and I'd like to invite Adejumoke Adisa to come and read the second Bible reading. Good evening. The second Bible reading will be taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, from verses 1 to 12. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, said to me right for it. these words are true and faithful and he said to me it is done I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end I will give up the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son but the cowardly unbelieving abominable murderers sexually immoral Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had seen, who had the seven bowls, who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And show me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like the most, uh, like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with twelve gates, and twelve angels at the gates, and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. This ends the reading of the second scriptural reading. May God bless his holy word. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. And now for today's sermon, I'm going to call our lead pastor, Pastor Shion Alji. Good evening, everybody. And so good to have you all here celebrating the life of um, Akindechi Samuel Agar. I had the honor of knowing Deji, pastoring him for such a short time. I like the fact that we are all here singing all those beautiful, lovely hymns. Perhaps one of the things that I miss the most from the churches of the world, where we sing a lot of hymns. We seem to have a lot of hymns for different occasions. Uh, when we are naming, we sing our folk we follow. Uh, for those of you that didn't understand what I just said, I just spoke in tongues. We had aims for weddings to God be the glory, great things he has done. We had aims for dedicating a new house, new business. And we had aims for funeral. I've said to a number of people that the hardest part of the job of being a pastor, the hardest part of that job description is to have to bury someone, especially when they're young. For funeral, we usually would 
sing several hymns. One of it is, It is Well With My Soul, seems to be one of the popular ones. I'd like to share with you a simple story, a short story about how that song came to be. The composer of that song was a man by the name Horatio Gates Spafford. Mr. Spafford was a very successful American lawyer and a businessman who had a lot of interests in real estate. However, in 1873, during the panic of the financial crisis, he lost everything. He made some very bad decisions in real estate, and he lost everything. There was a great fire of Chicago two years before then, and then by the time the crisis came, he couldn't recover. And so after two years of hardship, he decided to take his family for a change of scenery, he decided to move them to, the, to Europe so that they could experience something better. They were to journey from Chicago to Europe, but they were to pass through New York. He had moved with his family to New York when there was a change of plans for his business. And so he decided that he should stay back and for his wife and his four children to go ahead four daughters, interestingly, to go ahead of him to Europe while he took care of business and then he was going to join them. What he didn't realize was that that was going to be the last time he would ever see his children. They got on a liner that was called Villa do Avre. And on November 22nd, in 1873, that particular liner, or ship or vessel, whatever you call it, collided with another British ship. And even though they told everybody that that ship was unsinkable, you recall that several years after then, about 30 something years after then, there was another unsinkable ship, you remember? that ship. But it wasn't the first ship that they called the unsinkable ship. It was this particular one. Even though they said it was unsinkable, it only took 12 minutes for that ship to sink. His wife held her children as much as she could, but at some point, the waves and the sea snatched the last one away from her. And as the water took that child away, record has it that she said these words, do not be afraid. The sea belongs to him and he made the sea. Within 12 minutes, the ship sank killing 226 people on board, including all of the children of Mr. Sparfold. His wife was one of the survivors because she held onto a floating plank. And for days she couldn't talk. A rescue ship took them away, but their four daughters were gone forever, buried in the middle of the ocean. The oldest of the four children was just nine years old, and her name was Hani. The second one was seven, Margaret. The third one was just five years old, Elizabeth. And the last one, Tana, or Tanix, was just two years old. Mr. Spafford got the telegraph from his wife, describing what it is that had happened. And he decided to go see her because now she was with friends in France. During the journey, 
He was summoned by the captain of the ship that he boarded to come to the cabin. He got to the cabin and the captain of the ship said to him that he was able to identify the very spot where that initial boat drowned and where his four children were buried in the midst of the ocean. He didn't say a word. Went back to his seat and wrote down these words. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Did you call me on the phone two days before his passing? Telling me how he needed my permission to speak with Olida and with Kenny to be able to access some very sensitive church data because he had recently joined our IT department and was so full of ideas of some of the things we could do to not only secure our data properly, but also to make them quite accessible to our church parishioners. Two days later on Sunday, August 6th, I saw him in church, sitting right there. Perhaps the first time you ever sit in front. He never sat in front. Would always hide at the corner there, perhaps watching us now. <laughs> but I saw him in church. And after service, he came to me and said, Pastor, you need to schedule something on your calendar this week because we really need to talk to you about some of the ideas that we have. It's H-O-N, now we call our department ministries. So H-O-N means the head of ministry. And the team lead, who is the pastor in charge of that team, said to me that this man has been fantastic and we're considering making him the assistant H-O-N. Bear in mind that the job just been consistent in church for about two to three months at that time. He had visited before, but we're in a far smaller place. And I remember how it is that he harassed all of us and said, he said, make we come, make we come. Where you want poor people? You want make we sit on top of each other? And I remember when the parents visited and I spoke with them, and they said to me how it is that they really would love for all of their other children to attend and be committed in this church. Did you truly did that? I didn't realize that it was going to be the last time I would hear his voice. Because the next time I saw him was about five or six hours after that encounter in church that day. But at this time, I didn't hear DJ's voice. We were all just holding on to his lifeless body, praying and trusting God for a miracle. The death of a loved one is usually very personal. We all are in the same boat, even though with different experiences. Everyone who knew Deji had a different version of him that was personal to them. To Mr. and Mrs. Akara Adichie was a son. To Oida, Taiwo, and Kenny, he was an older brother. To Taiwo, perhaps the only brother that watched Arsenal with him. To Adiola, he was a lover and a friend. To Papa and Mama, we honor you. Thank you for coming out tonight. He was not just their nephew, it was a son to them. He was a big brother 
and an uncle to Sam, our dear Sammy. To some of us here, did you was a bosom friend, to some a generous giver, to some he was just a kind man. To us in this church, he was a gentle brother. But to me, Viji was my parishioner, a church member, and a sheep in my care for such a short time. Life truly is short. And I know there are questions in our hearts. Why did he die? Oh my God, I've had that question like a million times in the last three weeks. Somebody said, Pastor, explain to me now. Why did he die? Why did God allow it? Who caused his death? What did he do? What was his sin? Or his offense? It kind of reminds me of the story in John chapter 9. How it is that he said to Jesus that this man that is crippled, who sinned? You know, there's a way that life and people likes to explain everything that happens to people. And Jesus responded to them and said, nobody sinned. I, I kind of feel like if I was Jesus, I would said, can you just shut up and just face front? Jesus said, nobody sinned, but that the glory of God may be revealed in this situation. I say this to you tonight, guys. There are questions that we will never have answered to on this part of eternity. There are answers that we will never know. First Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 9 to 12, it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then what is in part shall be done away. Truly we know in part and understand in part. When we meet Jesus, we will know all things. In Ecclesiastes, the Bible tells us that there is a day to be born, and a day to die. We are all going to die someday. Hopefully not too, not too soon from now. But we are all going to eventually die. And it just challenged all of us to reflect on our lives. That one day we can be talking and be there with family and friends. And the next day we are gone. On our grave. Just like we're going to put on the Jesus' grave tomorrow when we commit his body to Mother Earth. There will be a day that is written that he was born for the Jesus was March 7, 1994. And then there will be a day that he passed on. In between those two days, there will be a dash. You don't have control over the day you were born, and you will never have control over the day you die, but you have control over the dash in between. They just filled in his own dash. What will be your own dash? God gave us some answers already. Now, just share this with you as I wrap this up. Now, my church members know that as a good pastor, you wrap up three times. But tonight is not one of such nights. I promise. What I love about God is that he made provisions for us ahead of all things. We are the ones that are caught by surprise. There's nothing that surprises him. For he knows the end from the beginning. No wonder he is called Alpha and Omega. In fact, my pastor taught me that there's nothing like Alpha and Omega. It is one word, Alpha and Omega. Because he wouldn't have a right to be called Alpha if he wasn't Omega at the same time. It was both the beginning. It's both the beginning and the end. As a matter of fact, he created time. But to create time, he had to step into time to create time and step outside of time for time to be. What a mighty God mysterious one for that matter. Number one, I want you to know that his love for us is everlasting, regardless of what it is that we go through. Our hearts are hurting. Our hearts are broken, perhaps. We're not even sure how it is that we'll be able to heal. 
but his love for us is everlasting. Situations like this will make us think, maybe God left us. Maybe we did something wrong. He promised never to leave us, not to forsake us. And he also promised that he will not let us go through situations that we do not have the grace to bear. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us that the temptations in your life or the situation and circumstances that look really grievous are no different from what others experience. But God is faithful. Somebody say God is faithful. Oh, can I crave your indulgence that you be a preacher tonight? Let me look at your neighbor and say God is faithful. And now look at the other neighbor for me and say God is faithful. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than what you can stand. But when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. This is a temptation, my brothers and my sisters. Our hearts are truly broken about what has happened. Perhaps one of those days that Ephesians chapter 6 described as the evil day. When it comes, we must remember always that his love never fails. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 tells us, therefore put on every piece of God's hammer so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the day of evil. You will be able to resist in the day of evil. Listen to me, folks. It's not if the day of evil will come. Is when it will come. But the Bible admonishes us to be ready for it. Because if you are just getting ready, when it arrives, you're ready too late. The G certainly was ready to meet his maker. Even though he was shocked, but he didn't catch him unaware. I'll leave you with these thoughts. Our wisdom is too small to fully understand God's overall plan. And that is why sometimes it doesn't make sense. But we still have to judge him faithful. Death and life have a lot of similarities, folks. But we only like the life parts. We don't like the death. But they are both transitions. One is transition from eternity into this space called time. The other is transition from time back into eternity. The Bible encourages us not to mourn like unbelievers. If you please put off 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 back on the screen for me. But he encouraged us to do a few things at a time like this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 said, well, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who are fallen, concerning those who are died, and who are asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Somebody say, I have hope. Let's say it better. Say, I have hope. I have hope. So the Bible says we should not mourn like unbelievers mourn. They don't have hope, but we have hope. What is our hope? He said, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. <coughs> for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, we by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And I know verse 18, if you allow me to please read it. Verse 18 says, Therefore comfort one another with these words. Number one, I want you to know that the departed is in a far better place. 
You know why sometimes when people die and we go past us, we ask us to come and pray for the dead to come back to life. Sometimes we pray hard. But the dead does not come back. You know the reason why sometimes the dead do not come back? Because we are crying, but they are looking on us with pity. That if only you knew where I was, where I am, even you, you want to come very quickly. No wonder Apostle Paul says we should comfort ourselves with these words. Let it comfort you that the dead are in a better place when they are in Jesus before they die. For Christians, it is not a goodbye, it is a good night. When your friend said to you, good night, I'll see you tomorrow, you don't cry, do you? No, you don't. Because you know that you're going to see them the following day. For us as believers, today G, it is a good night, not a goodbye, because he died in Christ. When we close our eyes and we move on to eternity, that you will be there as one of those welcoming us into the bosom of our Lord. The dead, like the G, have joined the cloud of witnesses watching how we run our own race. We should therefore live every day ready. Make your life count. Apostle Paul ended it by saying, comfort each other with these words. But I was only talking to born again Christians. If you are not born again and your life is not in Christ, you can't be comforted with these words because you have no part in it. Sometime last year, my family got an invitation to take a tour of the White House. And it was after several months or days of background check and screening and all of those. But I couldn't make it because I had other businesses to take care of. And I said to them jokingly, I said, don't worry. The day that I want to eventually go to the White House, they will come and pick me from home. You guys are driving there. But when they got there, they had the list. They had to check the list with their names and their passports to be sure that they were who they said they were, confirm their identity and allow them to be able to go in. When they came back, I said to them, did you see Biden? They said, no, we did not see him. But we saw him enter his car and leave. I said, it's because I didn't come with you guys. If I did, Biden would have sent us. Would have sent us. To enter the White House, there had to be background checks. There had to be screenings and all of those protocols. But there's a better house in heaven that God himself had made ready for us. But just like I had to be screening in the White House and background check, there has to be some background check to be able to enter the house. Jesus said, I go forth to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I wouldn't have promised that there's a place. Revelation chapter 20 that Jimmy read from verse 12. If you please read it with me. Revelation chapter 20, 20 from verse 12. It says, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. Revelation chapter 20, if you please put it on the screen. I saw the dead, from verse 15, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what had been done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up his death, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. And if you please read verse 15 with me, is it there on the screen? Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. Everybody at the count of three want to go. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
DJ has challenged all of us today to reassess our lives. Only one way to get into that book of life is to know Jesus. I ask humbly tonight that you bow your heads and take a minute to reassess our lives and consider truly if our names are written in that book. In that book. If you are here tonight and you say, Pastor, I know if I die today, close my eyes, I'm going to wake up in heaven with Jesus. And I know I'm going to heaven. I'm born again, saved. I know him. And I know, and I know, and I know that I'm going to be with the Lord. If you are that person, can I please ask that you raise your hand while every head is bowed and every eye closed. You are that person, you said, I'm very sure of my salvation. I know I'm going to heaven. I know if Jesus comes today, I'm going to be with him. Can I see your hands up? Just wave at me. Anybody like that? You're very sure. Thank you. Thank you for those of you that are very sure. If you couldn't raise your hands the first time, it's because you are not sure. I want to give you an opportunity tonight to meet Jesus. Oh, Pastor, how can I know him? Romans 10 tells us, Say, for with the heart man believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For if thou will believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and will confess with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. If you are that person and say, Pastor, I want you to pray with me. I'm not going to ask you to step out of your seat. I'm not going to ask you to do any of those. But while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I just want to give you an opportunity. If you are that person, can you please place one of your hands on your chest so that I can pray with you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you are that person, put your hand on your chest. If you have one of your hands on your chest, I want you to lift up the other one to me. Lift it up to me so that I know where you are. I can see you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I see several hands. Thank you. Wave it to Jesus better. Let, let Satan be ashamed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of you. Thank you. I see several hands in this house. And I want you to pray with me. As everybody, we pray this prayer together to support them. Say, Dear Father in heaven, can we say it better? I come to you in Jesus' name. I ask that you forgive my sins and wash me in your blood. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God and you died for my sins. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. Help me to be a better person and to live a life that will count in eternity. Thank you, Father. Say, I am now born again. I know Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Can we celebrate Jesus for those folks that give their life to Christ? And this time I'm going to ask that the family steps forward and we all are going to pray for them. Is that okay, guys? Is it okay to pray for the family? Let's rise to our feet as the family comes forward. Your goodness is running out. He's running out to me. Your goodness is So 
for them that the Lord will strengthen their hearts, that the Lord will heal their hearts, that the Lord will truly comfort them, that the peace of God will flood their hearts, that the joy of the Holy Ghost will fill their hearts and that they will heal supernaturally in the name of Jesus. If you can pray in the Holy Spirit, let's pray in tongues and feel. And I want the pastors to join me. If you can just pray in the Spirit for a few minutes. today that you will do a perfect work of healing in the name of Jesus can I hear a better amen Lord I ask that you will fill their hearts with your joy and with your peace in the name of Jesus we ask that you will keep the family keep them in your love keep them in your love Father fill their hearts with the hope the hope of tomorrow. Let every hurt, let every ashes be turned around for beauty. Amen. Let every broken heart be healed Amen. and let every feeble knees be strengthened Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, give them a reason to smile again. Amen. Give them trouble for their trouble. Amen. Comfort them, Jesus, Amen. and do what only you can do. We thank you because you have helped us so far. And Father, as we go through the funeral tomorrow, strengthen their heart, Jesus, we pray. Let your name be glorified. We give you praise, Father. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus as they go back to their seats. QR code displayed on your screen and you'll be able to share your testimony. You have the option of having it read or sharing it in person. Are you interested in joining the GSC ambassadors? Please count the QR code displayed on your screen or you see one of our leaders at the end of the service. GAC family, don't Praise forget, God. every Wednesday is our Bible study on Zoom. Amen. We're going to be running up. Praise God. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, can I hear a better amen? Yes. 
Well, for those of you that are here for the first time, this is Global Harvest Church. We want you to know that we are truly grateful that you made out the time to come out to be of support and to strengthen the hearts of a lovely family, the Agaras family that have been a tremendous blessing to this church. We want you to know that Jesus loves you truly and that uh, he has bigger plans ahead of us. Um, I'm going to ask Oina to come and do the vote of thanks and uh, we are going to go over to going over a few announcements and I know that they are sharing some bags now. Please collect one. Amen. Collect one. Make sure you enjoy what is in it. Don't forget the sermon tonight. We do not grieve like others that have no hope but we have hope. All right, let's welcome Oida to do the give out of thanks and then we will take the final hymn and be on our way out. Good evening once again. Um, I'm not sure why I'm opening this. <laughs> um, well, this is not the vote of thanks I thought I would be giving this year, but um, here we are. On behalf of the entire Agara family, my parents, my siblings, and I, um, I want to say a very big thank you to everyone. Um, the outpouring of love that we have received in this difficult time has, has been very humbling, I would say that. Um, And I was, I was just telling um, Diola recently, and I was like, if there's anything I have learned from my brother's passing, is that I have to think of what people would say about me when I die, and live every single day that way. Because um, every single person that reached out to um, extend their condolences, had the same thing to say about my brother, and um, I am very grateful for the life he got to live, and I'm very grateful for every single person, uh, emotionally, financially, physically, everybody has been tremendously amazing, <laughs> um, and very supportive in this period. Um, I want to take a moment to appreciate a few people um, in particular. Um, the first person would be our pastor. He has been a pillar of support in this time. Um, the second person would be Tolu Adilala. Tolu has been, I turn left, she's there. I turn right, she's there. I look to the front, she's there. I look to the back, she's there. She's currently passing out bags. She she has basically wrapped her, her arms around me and my family. And girl, God bless you. Um, There's so many people. It's soccer team. You guys were, you, you, you blew us away. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Thank you guys so much. Um, to his friends that flew all the way, a lot of people are here from Canada. So many people are here from the United Kingdom. So, I don't know if there's anybody here from Nigeria. but um, And so many people from out of state. I want to thank you from the deepest part of my heart for taking the time to honor my brother. Um, and if you really suffer our in Jesus' name, um, to all of the many, many, many different people that are here, a lot that I don't even know, um, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here to honor my brother. And I pray that in every way possible, the Lord will honor you. Um, we would not have to bury any of our young ones again in Jesus' name. Um, and last but not the least, please, for those who will be attending the funeral tomorrow, but using the same program, 
um, the part for the funeral is after the service of songs. So please bring your program with you tomorrow. Um, and once again, thank you all for being here and I wish everyone a safe journey back home. Thank you. All right, we're gonna rise to our feet to take the last aim for tonight. The funeral tomorrow is at 12.30. So please let us come. But I want to specially acknowledge and honor the presence of a man of God in our midst. And Daddy, we are grateful that you found the time to come. Please help me honor Baba Ejo. Baba Ejo. Thank you so much, sir. Help me celebrate God's servant. We honor you, sir. We're grateful that you made out the time to come. I'm going to let the choir lead us in the hymn and then what shall we pray father we thank you for the beautiful event that we've had honoring the departed deji father we ask that as we go tonight let your blessing go with us let your peace be with everyone let us wake up tomorrow with newness of strength and with joy in our hearts knowing fully well that for deji it is not a goodbye but only a good night. And those of us that are left behind, let's make the rest of our days. We ask for strength and for grace to make the rest of our days count. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody says, Amen. Shall we share the grace together? That the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rests and abide with us now and forevermore.
have a good night everybody god bless you for coming see you tomorrow